you will say something on facebook or something you will look and you find out that it is christians pastors leaders in churches that is fighting they are the ones fighting eh? you will talk about prayer pray for three hours ten hours they will say it's not about prayer your pastor doesn't have a prayer life when a man truly has a heart for people what he's spending is he's, he's, he's spending himself i hope you know you can do ministry without spending yourself hmm? the, this ministry has principles and rules and my brother you know now there are things you do church will grow there are things you do church will grow you don't have the people there you don't you don't even care about them the system is so strong that it doesn't recognize people it only recognizes the result the indices that is used to measure progress in what god called us to do has nothing to do with with organic dimensions it only has everything to do with structures principles rules huh? in other words a son of satan can rise in rank and have impact and that was the problem in many you know if it's always a challenge even if even if the ministry is well meaning when you become big you have structures have administration have everything is a good thing but the bad thing there is that somebody can take advantage of that structure and rise and imagine when that person rise and then high boy now comes with hunger into that kind of ministry yeah Every day after service, you will find one corner. Two hours before you go. Meanwhile, pastor himself, <laughs> pastor himself knows that he is struggling to pray for 10 minutes. See, I'm not against pastors, so, but pastors don't pray. It's a fact. Why are people angry when it's the truth? You don't pray. People don't. Pastors don't pray. Some of them listen to me. You don't pray literally i'm not saying they pray small they don't pray am i lying some of the people if 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 your husband is a pastor a woman you know she, he doesn't pray pastor's wives can tell you their husband don't pray even if it's 15 minutes they don't <laughs> what i'm saying if you are a pastor's okay let me know good you that is a pastor's son, have you not noticed it? Highest thing they do is that your mother will force morning devotion. Is that how is that what you used to run ministry? People's destiny, all of them come and say, Our pastor is preaching today in the evening. Let's go so that our life will change. And the pastor doesn't have a prayer life. <laughs> oh God have mercy beg god don't put me under this kind of pastors you are wasting time with your body and hunger that those kind of environment can cage what you have and when such men find out that you are pressing into something that they will never it's not just that they cannot it's just that they have decided that they won't you are not getting what i'm saying if it is that they can't then when they find opportunity find resource and grace they can give themselves to what it takes but these kind of people have decided to live a lazy to be a lazy pastor they are looking for a way to run ministry without bible study and fasting without prayer so and they are good in it get a good worship do one or two things and you feel something that looks like god's presence and then you go and borrow something from a book or message and preach and then you go and after that time is enjoyment throughout the week may you not be cursed to be found under such a pastor Amen. i know i know this thing i said now will be trouble but it's a good one what we need is a genuine revival and it will start in the church that's where it will start it's in the book of ezekiel huh? go call ezekiel say come here he said come let me show you what is happening be beyond the temple walls that men are serving other gods but when you come in the open you will not know the gods they have they use plaster and cover the wall the, it's a wall there is a plaster that covered it but when you go before it they are bowing to other gods their shrine is there 
it might not be that you did any charm but there is a god of pleasure there is a god of loose life there is a god of immorality there is a god of self and materialism that the man is having huh? then when he comes he obeys principle and church grows in such a place people will come and be hundred we are 10 today then tomorrow we are 20 and they said that there is a revival our number is increasing they are increasing moving towards a place where there will be vehicles that's why we have people fill churches huh? and then when you come and say are you with me when you come and say let the believers let christians arise you will say something on facebook or something you will look and you find out that it is christians pastors leaders in churches that is fighting they are the ones fighting huh? you will talk about prayer pray for three hours ten hours they will say it's not about prayer your pastor doesn't have a prayer life and that's why he raised a doctrine against prayer when a man has a prayer life even if even if he doesn't like the way you are praying he will not preach against prayer even if he feels that you are praying too much he will just reserve his comments he will reserve his comment about the way you are praying but he has a prayer life and he knows that attempting to is oh my god even if you don't like the way people talk about bible too much if you are a if you are a bible person and you study you can't talk about scriptures you can't talk about fasting you can't talk about you can't talk about soul winning even if you are not a sold out soul winner eh? when you see people that win souls you bring your money and put there even though you won't go you bring your prayer and put there even though you won't go eh? your pastor doesn't have a prayer life that's why you are there you are under a curse woe unto them whom their princes rise up early in the morning to eat and drink <laughs> repent repent that's the language of revival days what repent if there is no reason for you to repent in this my teaching then there is no reason for this teaching it is for us to recover the grounds that god gave us there is grounds of god's exact expectation there is declension there is departure and the purpose of god in this teaching is to have a recovery at least even if it's not a recovery in practice let it be a recovery in knowledge first let it down on us that there is a need in hand so that them that want to work with god can stand and say god is there something you can do for me even if i can't do it by myself can you help me and for such men i pray and intercede daily the people that really want to work with god even if they can't we cry that grace will come though the more abundantly i love you the less i be loved this man he is loving people and they are loving him less he continued he continued he continued when you have heart for people and you come are you hearing me and you come people are complaining of sickness they are sick everywhere are you hearing what i'm saying if you truly have a heart for people even if you can't do anything it will bother you what do we do about people being sick is there no solution in the scripture is there no solution in the scripture for this lack and poverty is there no solution in the scripture for everybody complaining about about immorality masturbation and they're trying is there no solution you will start digging start praying start fasting start digging start praying why is people complaining that they can't pray they can't fast they can't that's what motivated me to what i'm doing now people are the greatest challenge of the believer is actually the secret place if your secret place <laughs> that's why what we are doing here is a fundamental duty to the body of christ to a generation and generations till jesus come because our key grace is the grace of the altar it is not the talk it is by the life and the activity that is on the altar. Nobody sees and hears us without its altar coming alive. If the person is genuine, the first point of revival that comes when a man encounters us is that something comes alive. Somebody that is struggling to pray for five minutes, somebody stands in one place for five hours. Is immortal. Such reality, such experience cannot be found on earth. 
is immortal is divine dimensions of god's effulgence that came and held somebody that is you are too weak you have tried to pray the best you have ever done in your life even in a corporate meeting is 30 minutes you just heard a man and his voice thundered and the weight of the flesh and limitations shattered at the voice of the thunder and then you rose up with fire in your heart 